local, local artist and gearing up for several bookings throughout this year. Welcome to Let's Talk Gospel Music Gold. Hey, Carl, how you doing? All right. How you doing? <laughs> I am doing just fine. Now, I would like you to give more detail to my audience of who you are and what you do. Well, uh, like like you said, my name is Carl Jones, and uh, I'm, I, I really, this is actually my first time actually kind of getting into what I do. Uh, um, I'm a bass uh, guitar player. You know, a lot of people say bassist or bass artist, but I call myself just a bass, regular bass guitar player, and um, I been playing i guess since 1995 um a um pastor let me tell you how it started believe it or not a pastor okay. uh in birmingham uh his name was uh alfred williams pastor alfred williams i, I don't think he'll mind me saying it he uh i was attending the church and he came up to me after church and said you know the lord showed me you playing the bass I said, well, he hadn't showed me. Now, when he showed me, I probably, you know, take you up on it. So I was like, and so he didn't let that go. He stayed um, pretty much on me until finally I went behind the door of our one of our rooms, and I, I could still see this day. I it was a I think it was a precision uh, PV four string, and no nothing. You know, look. Uh, I had a couple of run-ins with, um, in high school, um, uh, my band director had like some stage, Christmas stage plays where he, he would give it to me to play and I didn't know notes or anything. I, I was playing by ear at that time and huh. we did a song called Christmas Come But Once a Year and I think the song, I believe it was no, Don't Look Any Further or something like that, but every time those songs come on now on this 30 D- 30 years later, I'm like, wow, you know, and just the path of that. I always thank my band director, you know, Edward Maddox. He he instilled all kinds of instruments in us, and he, you know, after those occasions, he, uh, events, he, um, you know, had a string instrument class, and he put me on an upright bass, and so that's where it began. But look at this. I played that for I guess my last senior year of high school and then I didn't pursue it after that so I still didn't know you know notes or anything like that so it uh-huh. it was just you know I, I did it because he wanted me to do it with a little bow and we went to a couple of string concerts for you know high school string con- concerts and that was about it so I went on and graduated and began to attend Alabama State University and like I said, keep in mind, it was just trombone for before that. It was just trombone, trombone, okay. you know, throughout that. So I had a four year scholarship, Alabama State. And that was it. You know, I forgot all about bass guitar and maybe a couple of stage acts. I, 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 it's kind of vivid, but I was trying to remember, did I do any bass playing during that time? And I think I did like, you know, me and a couple of friends have some some time and uh, after school we would go, you know, make a little extra money. And I think I played drums a little bit and bass. You, know, you think you played drums? I, it, it's so long, you know, thirty. You're talking thirty years ago, but I, I, that's what I was trying to remember. Did I do any bass playing? And uh, I, I just, you know, it's kind of vivid. I can't remember, but I remember um, playing the drums for a couple of churches. I do remember that, but. Like you said, I, I, all, all the while I play bass, I always try to figure out did I do any of that during college years, and I, and I think it was just a little bit. And so when he asked me that, I was thinking, I don't know anything about bass. So I took up maybe about three weeks of lessons or two weeks, and every time I come back, this guy like, you are fooling me. You are a bass guitar player and you just trying to probably get some good ideas from me. I said, no, I don't even know notes. And I guess the way I was playing, he thought I would just coming in, you know, and pulling his leg and trying to, 
I guess get some more secrets about bass or something, but I really didn't know. So I, 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 that was in probably 95, 96 when I was doing that. And, and I just know, I, I, some of me just said it's more to this base. So I, I began to, you know, just go visit a couple of churches and, and I had a con, well, I had a concert, uh, with the late Melvin Crisper. He was doing a workshop in an area called Bessemer, Alabama. And, that's why I met my first encounter with how a bass should sound. It was two guys, a guy named Reginald Reynolds and um, a guy named Brian Johnson. So they play, he asked to play my bass because he didn't bring a bass. And when he played it, I was like, no, I didn't know a bass sound like that. Wow. <laughs> and I'm like, that's my bass, but I never heard it sound like that before, you know, because I was guessing all through my church years in 95. I was guessing, I, you know, I didn't know it should sound something like that. So mm. I exchanged numbers with Reginald and he was like, come to my house. And so I came to his house and the first thing he did, he noticed I had a cheat sheet on the back of my bass with my notes on it. So he was like, that's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to take those bass notes off of it. <laughs> I'm like, and I'm talking, listen, I'm talking six months. I did that. I, 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 you know, I, I was playing by ear and I think about this guy named C dub. What he, he was talking about transposing on keyboards. So when he took that, those tape notes on the back of my bass off, it was like the world ended because when I play with people, I can quickly look on the back of my bass, you know, and and I can tell you what key we're in. But when he put that, took that off, he said, either you learn them or you can't come see me. So I appreciate that, you know, because it taught me to learn my notes. And that from that point on, that's when I, I followed him. Listen, I would carry his bags. I would carry his amp. And I would watch him go to his concerts and it started then because the okay. church I was, you know, the church I was attending, those guys were kind of beginner instrument players and they pulled me in a meeting. They said, look, you sound like you playing jazz. That's not the way we play. And I'm like, uh, and so we kind of like bump heads a lot because I begin to advance on the bass and it seems like I was. I guess showing out or something because I was playing a whole lot better and these guys didn't want to, you know, they just wanted to play. And so that's when I began to say, well, I think my time, my season is up at this church. And so when I left that church, that's when my career, I believe, really started because I, I went to a church, Antioch Baptist Missionary Baptist Church. It's in an area called Pratt City, Alabama. And from that point, that's when I grew and grew and grew and grew and it's history from that point you know and and, and it's like I, I i have a couple of cassettes of me playing back then now you listen if i say cassette that means that's a long time ago right i don't know about a cassette I, okay <laughs> so i had a I, I still have cassettes and I hadn't played them because I don't have a cassette to play on, but I, I really want to go back and just listen to how I played to now, you know, and it's like, mm. wow. But, but you know, throughout that time, I told you, uh, Reg, Reginald Reynolds, um, it was a couple of guys I asked during that concert to, uh, help me out. And a couple of, you, a couple of them, they were like, saying yes they were going to call me i can call them but they never would answer the phone so in that i took when when god advanced me that if i did start giving bass lessons always remember how they treated me when when i was coming up and so that's that's when i feel like god started launching me higher and higher because now i believe i'm at like 28 bass students and okay okay yeah and so what I always tell them that I was once where I want, I look up, looked up to a couple of guys and they would never spend time with me. So I always remember that, that, Hey, I want to spend time with these guys and show them 
what I wanted at that time, I'm going to give it to them. And, you know, and they'd be like, um, okay, it's been two hours. Are you done? I said, no, are you? No, I would tell them, look, are you done? Because I would give them whatever they want, how long they want. And, and, and because I always remember that's what I wanted, you know, and, and, and I, I have a thing where if they want me to go to a church with them after they start playing in churches or whatever, I'll come in and hook it up with them and play with them if they want. Cause that's some of the things I wanted. And mm. you, oh, you just don't know the joy of that. It's like a passion like none other because I know that's some of the things I wanted. And, and to, to see the look on their face when I start doing that. They would been, you know, have been looking up to me and now I'm sitting with them, playing with them. So if, say if it's example, if there is an area where they don't feel comfortable playing, I would play in that spot. And then when they feel comfortable, I'll turn my bass down. So I did that a couple of times and maybe I say maybe five to 10 students are now professional bass players you know they're playing and now look i see them and one of my bass students his name is uh rufus jones i think it was rufus rufus jones his name was rufus jones uh jr and he's now playing football and uh under Deion sanders you know the uh, Deion sanders that played uh for dallas uh -huh. well he oh, yeah. yeah he's playing for him so i just knew he put the bass down bass, uh the guitar he had he was about 15 at that time, 14, 12, somewhere in there. And I remember he, he was playing guitar a little bit. He'll sing a little bit. So I just kind of added the bass in and, and I always, before I tell their parents or whoever to buy a bass, I would bring my bass just to see if they have the passion. I look for just, you really want to do this because there's so many things you can get into now that I look for that in a person that if you really want to play your soul that every time I come back, you'll go an extra mile and I'll give you more, you know? And so he was one of those person. I mean, everything I give him, he writes it down. He come back and said, look, this is what I did. Look, look, look at this. And I'm like, now I know I didn't show you that. I'm like, but I spent a lot of time with him and another bass student, Stephen Brown, and another one, Gabrielle McKinney. And see, these guys, I call them my favorites because they showed that the passion, you know, the passion that playing bass, they showed that. And so, mm -hmm. you know, and I, it just feel good. You just don't know the feel. I, even now, like, look, I get, I get emotional I sometimes thinking about how I wanted that. And I had maybe a couple of guys that would, lean back toward me and give me that to get me where I am that now I just, I, I, I try to, you know, go to the extreme with giving back to, you know, base students or guitar students. Listen, I have one that's 61. I wow. have one, a lady that was 66 years old. She began to play the guitar and it's like, and I just look at all that like, wow, just because I wanted to turn it around where I'm in the position to give back, it's, it's, it's blessing me. You know, it's, it, and some of them were like, how much I owe you? I said, you owe me pursuing this. That's what you owe me. Just pursue this. And I said, now when you become famous, remember me. <laughs> and, and yeah. So, so Rufus, listen, he plays football right now as I speak. And I went on his, on his Facebook page. I think it was his Instagram. He holding concerts on the campus. And it's like the whole campus is wrapped around this stage with him singing, playing the bass, playing the guitar. And I'm like, you don't know how great that felt. To see him, and I called him, I still have his personal number, you know. I said, when did this happen? You know, and I'm like, and just to see that, you know, and, and I think Dan, um, Deion Sanders have a, a, I guess, a brief show he has, and he's one of his favorite football players. And just to see 
he's connected like that, still pursuing those instruments, you know. And so, but yeah, but that that's the passion of this that I carry so much. But but now it's going on to ministry and you know just all other avenues. But I was so humble when Billy reached out to me to just simply get that bio. And, you know, it took me, he was wondering, uh, I, I was, was, you know, I had to sit down and just think about a lot of things before I made it. And I'm telling you, it was just, when I started writing it down, I could not believe all the things that I've accomplished and, and did, you know, and it, it's like, just by going, oh, just, you know, just by spending time, I feel like just giving that passion back. Call okay. some of the other now, things. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna pause I'm gonna pause right there because you know I'm gonna backtrack on some stuff because I've been taking notes I take notes when I'm talking to folks mm-hmm. so you can come back. <laughs> okay. But I'm gonna tell you this this is a scripture that I love is that iron sharpens iron mm-hmm. and I do things in my life I've done things in my life where I I've grown to learn that when you teach others. They grow, but not only do they grow, but you grow. Mm-hmm. But I want to go back to something you said earlier about the uh, one of the churches that you played for, and the musicians thought you were getting ahead of them. Mm-hmm. Now, I am a staunch believer that, you know, you want to surround yourself by people who want to grow mm-hmm. and who want to get better and want to uh, do better. And there's so many people, unfortunately, that like to just sit in where they are mm-hmm. and not expand not grow but when you practice and you learn and you glean that's the word is that you glean off of someone that you admire and you want to learn and grow Mm -hmm. and i hope and pray that since 1995 they decided that they wanted to grow themselves and decided to uh, give up that mentality of not wanting to see others grow because yeah. your growth could help them grow. And I'll, I'll just leave that there. Yeah, it so was so I, amazing. I was like caught in an actual meeting and they said, we think that sound like jazz and we think we have agreed that you shouldn't be playing on that style. And I was like, what do you mean jazz? And I'm trying to figure out like, all I'm trying to do is better myself on the bass. And simply, you know, just do uh, go higher on bass. But it was like the guy, he was transposing on the keyboard. And, you know, when I had a talk with him one-on-one, I said, now you asked the pastor to buy a $2,000 uh, Phantom, uh, Roland Phantom keyboard. Mm. I said, but you want to not figure out how to play it. I mean, and I, I thought, and I told him about David. I said, when they described David, he was... I mean, he was an excellent musician. He, 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 he was skillful. According to the word, it was, he was skillful. So that means he could play. He can play that harp. And that's what I brought up. I said, now David didn't just play the harp. He learned how to play the harp. And the anointing was on him, but he was skillful. He, he was skillful on the harp that it brought the spirits off of King uh, Saul, you know, and I'm like, that's what I, took to heart that I wanted to be skillful and, and you know and, and don't get me wrong hey I still want it's more that I'm hearing on bass that I'm not doing so I want to do more and I I talked to this guy and I said now if you thinking we can't go high on as musicians because he was like that's really not po- important the word is important I said you are right you are so right the word is important But I said, now the angels are praising God all day long right now. I said, now, if you're thinking praise is not important, I mean, and being skillful on your instrument is not important. I said, well, you probably won't end up in heaven because they're going to be praising Jesus all day long, you know. And so. You can't be telling people that. (laughs) I'm telling you. I I, I had to say it. I had to say it. it. But like you said, I began to see that. They were settled with where they were, so that's why I had to eventually say that uh, that's it. I gotta, I gotta turn my head in, you know. And and when I pursued the other churches, I began to meet other instrument players, bass players, keyboard players, 
And one of the guys, Anthony Williams, he he's a mentor for life because he was playing the organ, but he would show me bass lines, not knowing that I didn't know bass lines, but I was pursuing them because he would tell me to go home and learn that bass line. And that's what made me know how to play with him. And we could go now. I can meet. It's been, look, it's probably been 10 years since I played with him. We probably can come together with no practice and play because I know his style of playing because he showed me a lot of bass lines. And it uh -huh. came from an organ player, believe it or not. An organ player was showing me bass lines. <laughs> Well, see, you know, you you never know where where it's going to come. And then, yeah. as you said yourself, is that you feel that that is your ministry and going back and teaching people because of what you wanted, what you thirst for. Mm -hmm. And you want you know that others because sometimes people don't know what they want to ask for. Come on. You know, come on. if somebody is out there teaching you like I'm a singer and, mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to ask people, you know, do you want this? How you want it that way or whatever? And you have to ask. But some people, they don't know. Well, just, you know, uh, I had been in on a recording session and the guy, all those the same lyrics, mm -hmm. sing it this way. Okay, now sing it this way. Mm -hmm. So, but if he hadn't said change it, then I wouldn't have known to change. Exactly. So people don't know sometimes what they don't know. Mm -hmm. But if you show them certain things and then they think about it and get an opportunity, like you you can tell when you talk about this young man, the passion that you talk about this young man, Rufus, is that you can tell that not only did he take the heart what you were teaching him, but he also went and did what? Practiced. Mm hmm you have to practice, and when you practice, I can't remember, I'm, I'm trying to remember this guy I was listening to, and he hit, he was playing a song, and he hit something, and he was like, okay, so I didn't mean to hit that, but that really sounds good. Yeah, I know. So in practicing, you learn how to improvise and come on here, come on add here. more accents mm -hmm. on the music, and you know, or tonality, and then mm -hmm. you, you change it into something. That's how you make music your own. Mm -hmm. uh, and I said, I was uh, telling someone once, I said, musicians, they can play the same, you can put the same sheet of music in front of musicians, mm -hmm. and they're going to, a majority of them are going to play it differently. Even mm -hmm. if they're looking at the music, mm -hmm. they're going to play it differently because they're putting their own flavor in it. Own flavor, and come on now. That's the, mm -hmm. that's the fantastic growth that I see in music and why music is so expansive. That's it, uh, that's it. You know, and, but it's also is what that musician puts into it. Um, I know that we attended a church once where they would highlight the kids mm -hmm. and those that were taking music and stuff. And I would sit there and I, I would listen to this one kid and I'm like, that child hates that instrument. That's it. And my husband said, how do you know that? I said, because of the way they're playing it. Mm -hmm. I said, now this other kid, listen. He to listened. this child, that mm -hmm. child has a passion there for you that go. instrument, you know, and you can tell it. You those who have been around music, set around music, can see that. So mm -hmm. you see the passion That's in it. some of your students when they come out and they play similar to you, but mm -hmm. then they add their own flavor. Come on, come on, because <laughs> no, yeah, and uh, G Gabrielle McKinney is is like mistaken for me all the time because he pursue the way I played and he's he the chords I use the same exact chords you would go in the church and think it's me and it'd be him and everybody like do you know Carl and they like yeah he's like that's who taught me he said I thought you were him <laughs> you know because he pursued it he's the only one I, I could say Besides Stephen Brown, you know, they they really pursued it in a way that I could tell they wanted it. And that's what I look for. And believe it or not, I don't know, if you know, the comedian Ricky Smiley. I don't I don't I don't believe he'll mind me sharing this. But yet his son. I don't know him personally, but I do. Yeah. I've heard of. Ricky, yeah. yeah. Well, his son, we were uh, we were actually roommates at Alabama State. He he attended for a while, you know, and uh uh, you know, since he's been, you know, famous comedian, his son, he wanted his son to uh, actually uh, take le lessons from me, believe it or not. And 
And like I told you, what you just said, I look for the passion from whomever it is, whether you're 60, 80, whatever. Uh, and so I told him, I said, he said, do you want me to go buy an expensive bass? I said, no. So I, we got together and we went to a music store, um, in an area called Inverness, uh, Bailey Brothers. And when he went in, I said, look, get a five string. That's in between a six and a four. And don't pay a lot of money because he just might not want it, you know, and he was like, well, it don't matter. He'll, he'll get it. I said, yeah, they start off excited. And then if the passion in that is there, it'll continue. So let me tell you what happened. So we, we get that base, about maybe 200 bucks somewhere in there. Not, not expensive. So we go back and true enough, maybe three weeks out, he, he's writing the notes down and I'm telling them notes and, and, and I'll come back the next week. He'll tell me some of the notes, some of them. But in the midst, he want to watch SpongeBob. He's looking around me. He's got SpongeBob on the TV, and I'm I'm trying to get in front of the TV so he can look at me. And he got the bass on, but he keep leaning over to the left and the right, see SpongeBob. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> and so I was like, I said, he said, well, I tell you what, how about you just play the whole time? And I watched SpongeBob. I said, no, we're not watching SpongeBob. So I cut the TV off. And so I began to tell him, I said, I don't know. That's why I didn't really want him to buy anything expensive because yeah. he, he, he have, you know, some liking of music, but you can tell the passion in there. And that's all I was saying, but he wanted me to continue. And I am a man like this. I don't want to take your money and waste your money if I don't see the passion in. A musician, I, I would, I would give it so long, but if I see they don't want to learn the notes, they don't want to, the riffs, anything I give them to learn and, and I don't see them pursuing it, I kind of want to cut it off, you know. And he was like, just keep going. I said, no, I mean, $50 an hour. Hey, that's, that's a lot of money, but <laughs> I'm like, no. And, and see, that's, that's one thing about me. I, I even, I don't care how much money it is. I'm not going to just waste time if I don't see the passion in them. And uh -huh. the second time I came back, he flying a helicopter in the room. <laughs> He's going around. <laughs> and I'm like, wait a minute, dude. And so Ricky went there that day. His, his, uh, the lady that keeps the house was there. And she said, I'm going to tell your dad on you. And I knew then that was probably going to be the last time I do that with, you know, him. And, you know, I always think back to that. You know, it's like, and, and so I use that as an example on some of the students that, that this guy was flying a helicopter around the room and he wanted me to play the bass for 30 minutes to an hour. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you know, here's the, here's the thing too. He may have passion just, just talking. I don't know him. Yeah. And, uh, he may have a passion for music, but maybe not the bass. Yeah. Now, maybe not the bass. I'll yeah. tell you. Uh, uh, a real quick funny story about me uh, growing up well I started playing the piano at 7 and that was at the urging of my grandmother who mm -hmm. wanted to learn how to play the exactly. piano and so my mother and father said sure she can go ahead and play the piano but they never bought me a piano uh -huh. well my grandmother had one but they never bought me for our home mm -hmm. so I had this cardboard keyboard Mm -hmm. and you would have to sit there and play this cardboard keyboard, which, of course, you can't hear any music. You can't hear the music, exactly. Uh-huh. <laughs> but off and on, uh, I I decided, I said, I want to play a saxophone because mm -hmm. I thought that was pretty cool because when I got in high school, I was like, well, at least I could play in a band because when I was growing up, they didn't have pianos in the band. You exactly. can't do a band in a, in a piano. They didn't exactly. have electric pianos then. <laughs> so, uh I told my parents, I want to play the saxophone. And they were like, uh-uh. And I was like, what? So yeah. I said, okay, I'll, I'll show you. So I went and got a recorder. Oh, and look at you. And started trying to play that. Uh-huh. That was, that was not my friend. Come on. So I said, okay, uh, I'll do a harmonica. So I got a harmonica. <laughs> um, that was not my friend. I found out that wind instruments are not my friend. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> but yep. at least you know I was pursuing. I did have a passion for music, and that's why ultimately yeah. I sing. Mm -hmm. 
But I also played the piano because I, throughout my high school years, I would take piano lessons. In college, I didn't take piano lessons, but I went to music class. And mm-hmm. something that a lot of my musician friends talk about is theory. Mm-hmm. You need to know theory. Well, theory knocked me out of the water. Come on. <laughs> Come on now. I know. Now, see, that's, you know, that's what I begin to pursue after learning notes. I, you know, they start telling me about numbers on bass, and I'm like, what's numbers? And it, it, that's a part of theory. I'm like, oh, okay, so it's more. <laughs> so in the last two years, that's what I've pursued, the numbers, because we were more ear and notes. We didn't use numbers. This This new, you know, style of musicians, they use numbers a lot. And some of them use notes and numbers. So, so now, like you said, I had to go a step higher with n- numbers. And oh, I said, here we go again. Now I got to start over again. So, so now <laughs> if, uh, I started doing, uh, well, I started back doing bass lessons next month. Hopefully I can kind of squeeze a couple of people in because, uh, one of my students was 60, I think he's 60. 461 somewhere in there where he want to start back up then when he called another person asked me last night hey can you uh i said sure i'm like i'm like okay here we go i just wanted one or two but now i got four or five already (laughs) so but it's it's a joy it's a joy to do it it's a joy to do it and well i can can hear the passion in your in your voice and in your because this is our first time meeting Uh uh-huh Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, like you said, when now, you said recorder, well, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I'll, t- I'll tell you in a minute. I, I just, when you said recorder, I thought about that's where it started. Uh, when I was playing trombone in elementary, he gave us the recorder first. And when you said that, that's, we tooting on that thing all day and he kept playing, we kept playing that till finally he, he put everybody on an instrument. He put me on a trombone. And a, 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 fr- a best friend of mine, Alonzo Gunn, he got on a, trum- a trumpet. And I can still see us all in this classroom. Uh, another girl, Pamela Wiley, she was on the clarinet. So we began to form our band from that. And, it, we, hey, we marching around our neighborhood. And I think one of the guys made a plastic can drum. So we we started out a little band. <laughs> you know, it was too, I, you know, we, but it started from the recorder. When you said recorder, I thought about that, that <laughs> we even started our own little homemade band. And I thought about the little rascals, how they be inventing things. That's what we were. <laughs> so, yeah, but, but, oh my goodness, just looking back and now that's why I'm, well, I am going to buy, go to Walmart one day and buy a little cassette thing and try to, just play some of those old cassettes to see then and now. That's what I wanted to do. And just, cause look, I have VHS on it too. So, you know. It's like, well, you do know that they do have, uh, machines that will convert that. Really? I had some, I had some VHS tapes that I converted to, uh, DVD. Okay. Uh, okay. Some years back, but they also have that. Look on Amazon. Okay. okay. Listen, we're not doing a commercial, but we'll look on Amazon. We'll oh, talk okay. About that okay. You know, you had to, yeah, yeah, disclose. Yeah. You had to say that thing. <laughs> That's right. And, uh, we'll yeah. Talk about that off after the, the interview. <laughs> yeah. I, I've been wanting to take out time and go in my little treasure chest with all my VHS in there. And just, I got the v, VHS that shows me playing bass when I first started. Cause I went from that four string to a five string to a six string. And, you know, and the way I teach now is I do five string. That way you'll be in between a six and a four if you want. Cause if you learn a five, you can pretty much catch on to a six or a four. So that's okay. why I told Ricky Smiley to purchase a uh, five for his son, you know, and, mm. and I remember, look, he, I got a call from him maybe three years ago. He said, Hey man, I, I was doing a little spring cleaning and I still have that five string bass. He said, you, you want it? I was like, sure. <laughs> I'm like, thank you. <laughs> so yeah, that's sentimental to me now. And yeah, I have that and about maybe 
four or five other base, you know, different bases. And, and, you know, I, I don't play but one because it's my favorite, but it's heavier than all the other ones. And so I, I'm looking to eventually get a lighter one for my shoulders, you know. But, you know, it, and I was thinking about when you had set the date up, I was supposed to do a shoulder, right shoulder surgery in the next couple of days. And I was like, I, I thought it was in this week. And I was, I had to call my doctor to make sure. I was like, listen, I got an interview and I don't want to be all sore <laughs> with this right shoulder surgery. So can you push it back? So he pushed it back about two weeks from now. So that's going to have me kind of in between. But get this. I had left shoulder surgery and still played the bass within that week. Wow. I went to church. And I had two or three pillars packed under my left arm. And I had someone to put the bass on me. And I'm sitting there playing the bass with pillars <laughs> under my arm. And everybody just blowed away. It, it just, but it's that show's passion for uh -huh. music. It, it's, it, and I'm, I'm like, now if I can come in here a week after surgery and play this bass, and put pillows under my arm. You can't tell me you can't go play. You know, you can't go to play, you know, if you're, you got a headache or something. Come on now. Come on. Yeah. yeah. And, well, it just depends on the passion of the people. That's it. But I'm going to ask you this. I'm going to ask you this. Because looking here at some of the people that you've played for. Mm hmm And, well, I'll just, you name some of the people and I'll say, ah, let's hear about that. How you got started with them. Well, uh, let's see. Let's start with Lee Andrew. I believe Lee Andrew. It was either Lee Andrew. I, I, I always try to remember who was first because Lee Andrew and I'm trying to think of the the other one's name I got on there. And see, oh, Amber Bullock. That's it, or Amber Alexis. Bullock. You you hit it on the nail. Look, that was I believe that was the first artist i believe i played for um i was playing with a, a gentleman that had a uh, praise group uh his name was desmond hubbard and he had a concert and i believe she was invited and i played one or two songs for uh after she won and i didn't realize she was the the uh the the artist she she won and yeah so i played for her that night and I believe that's how that came about. I, you know, I was already there. And so she had two songs like it, it. Well, she actually did songs that everybody knew already. I think it was Lord, I love you more than anything was one of them. And, you know, just songs like that. Just everybody knew them. And then she began to give her testimony. And so that's how I ended up playing for her. Well, Lee Andrea, uh, someone called me. And told me she would be in town. And that's how I connected with her. So I connected with her manager and her husband at the time. And they exchanged numbers with me. And I played for her uh, like three places in the area where I live. So, so yeah, I connected with her that way. So that night, it was just... I'm playing for Leandro Johnson. And, 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 you know, it's like I could not believe it. And her husband, like, connected. We bonded the same night. And then I got his number. We talked over and over. And there were, a lot of people like, husband? She don't have a husband. <laughs> so, so, yeah, and we, we connected. She wanted me to come up to Atlanta because she had a church at that time. And I... I'm not fun about, at first I wasn't fun about traveling at the time. So, and you know, I'm, I'm trying to grasp being in front of a lot of people with somebody famous, you know, and so I had to take it one step at a time. So that was the first encounter with her. And then Bobby Jones, they had a stage play and I guess he, 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 he had went around different, you know, cities doing this. And they got a band together. And that's how I ended up connecting with him. And look, I, I wanted to find more pictures. I think I did. I, did I, I don't even know if I sent you, did I send a picture of that or no? I don't think I did. 
No, yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah, I took I pictures. One. Yeah, I took pictures of him and uh, we took pictures together at the end of the stage play. So that's how I connected with him. Then Charles Jenkins, same thing. Someone called me to come to Birmingham. Charles Jenkins was in Birmingham. He had a concert there, and they needed a bass player. So I ended up on that. So I, I, I exchanged number with his musician. So they're in Chicago. So, so, um, his name is Willie Jones, the, uh, the keyboard player. So me and him still. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I know Willie. Yeah. Well, see, see. <laughs> so yeah, um, we exchanged numbers. We were Facebook friends and I, I actually sent uh, a little screenshot of you. And and I, I'm sure I, he, he he gave me thumbs up, so I, I figured he. I said you probably. I knew he probably knew you, you know. And so <laughs> so he gave me thumbs up. So I told him, you know, I'll be doing this. And so he he said he'd be waiting on it because I know you said it, it won't screen till later, you know, or post till later, you know. But I want I want to get that information also from you, so I'll know how to present it to people when they want to, you know, come back and look at it or whatever. But yeah, and so. That, that experience with Charles Jenkins and, and, and the thing about it, it didn't get, make me get the big head. I humbled myself more. And it's like, that's why I always tell musicians, don't get the big head because you still, look, you still in Alabama, you know what I'm saying? So, (laughs) and and so I, I appreciate the opportunity and, you know, I just kind of added in and, and just to look back simply by leaving that church. God allowed me to go these different directions, you know, and now mm-hmm. I'm hearing he's he's wanting you to put the bass to the side and go off in the ministry. I'm like, OK, now, Lord, now I know. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, you know, God gives you uh, different paths. Mm-hmm. He will get you. And, you know, some people think that they're supposed to stay on it forever. I know. I'm and, one of them. <laughs> I'm one of them. You know, but God gives you so many different, uh, we know that God lives and God anoints you with different talents mm-hmm. and he shifts you. So at a specific time in your life, he shifts you because um, I started being just me, a choir member. Come on now. And then he shifted me to be a youth minister. Uh-huh. So I was a youth minister for a while. And then I got shifted again. Come on. You know, so you, but you have to listen to the word of God. Come on. And how he's telling you mm-hmm. where he wants you to go. Come on. So you, you know, follow that ministry that God is leading you to. Oh, I am. Look, Man. hey, I don't want to be Jonah, see. And that's why I feel like <laughs> I slightly been a little Jonah, right? Running with that base. And so <laughs> let me tell you my scare. You finna laugh at this. I think this shoulder surgery, he said, now, I, 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 hey, that left shoulder was the first warning. He said, now, the right one, you got to pluck the string with the right one now. Don't, 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 don't play with me now. I said, I ain't going to play with you, Lord. I, I got you. And see, the, the experience, the two churches I was minister music, you know, with, that's what I was looking at. I would get the mic and they said, Oh Lord, here come Carl with the mic. Y'all better just brace yourself because he's about to minister before praise team come up. <laughs> and so they and then I'll get to crying while I'm talking. And that, that's when I knew then that I'm not a, I, you, you can't, I know you're going to say this. You won't believe I want to talk at first. I want to talk. I was, I was nervous, scared to talk. And it's like, I know he did this because I want to talk her. And it's like, when I tell people that, and they say, I, yes, I find that hard to believe because you've been talking ever since you've been. <laughs> and, and so, yeah, those experience with the, being a minister of music, I was able to have a microphone, you know, because I would ha- have directions with the choir some. And then I had to get the band together. I had to get the music together. I had to make the rehearsals. And when we have service, sometime in between songs, I would grab the mic and say something. And sometimes it would be, it'll be a speech, you know, it'll be a sermon, you know. And, and so my last pastor, you my former pastor, Ted Chapman, he, he said, now when's your first sermon? I'm like, man, come on, man. Don't do that, man. He said, I said, let me just stay in this corner over here and I'm fine. And, 
now I'm not there at that church anymore. I, I'm at a church where I'm playing the bass. And I feel like that's what God said. Okay, you thought you could run and hide, but you can't run and hide. And uh -huh. that's where I am now. So that's what I was waiting to tell you that he's letting me know now. Okay, even though you're in that corner, now it's time. It's time. So he want me to, like you said, spend that time with him. And he'll give me the next directions on what I'll be doing. And it's, and, and look, I don't want to end up like Jonah. See, I don't want to have to <laughs> be set down somewhere and then have to run, you know, in three days, one day journey in three days, you know, I mean, a three day journey in one day. And so I don't want to have to go through that. So that's why I said, I said, the minute I get to talk to you, I'm telling you, Lord, you ain't got to tell me no more. <laughs> I'm going to do it. Yeah. Well, if you recall earlier when you told me, because you know, like I told you, I take notes, is that you said your pastor told you back in 90s. Mm -hmm, 95. He sees mm -hmm. you play at a bass. Mm -hmm. And then what did you wind up doing? Because you, you tried to run from that, but what did you wind up doing? Play in the bass. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 and see, the one, the, the my mentor that took the, uh, the, uh, you remember the notes off my base. We talked about, I think it was last, last Wednesday, sometime last week. He's, he just started his church last Friday. And he said, now, you know, God got you following me. He said, now, just like I took the notes off of that base, God is taking, he's taking the notes off of this, this base now for you to go in the ministry. So he said, you might as well go on into the call, accept the call and go on in, go on in. Cause, he he started his church and let's get this. He wanted me to come to play the bass the night he started the service. I was like, oh, here we go again. But he was so fond of hearing that. He said, man, you sound like what I was doing because it's been like a dullness while I've been playing these last, I guess, month. It's like a dullness has came over my playing. And that's what made me say that, okay, it's time. I, I see it's time because I ran to this, the new church. I've been in it probably a year and a half, two years, just playing bass, no mental music, no nothing. And he like, okay, you just think you're going to run and hide, right? Okay. <laughs> and now, well, I could just pick up a song like in minutes. Now I have to sit down and listen at the song all night almost to get it. And I'm like, okay, you telling me it's time up on this bass. <laughs> and to, yeah, he'll give you signs. And so I'm obeying the signs now. So, you know, I ain't going to, ain't going to run no more. I said, Lord, I've been slightly running. So I'm going to just back on back. And like you said, he'll direct my path on him. what he's going to have me doing. But, but in the meantime, I think that's why the, the, the best base lessons are starting back up next month. And I want to get with my son and, transition my bass plan to him but you know i have keyboards around drums around bass around and it's just like i was saying about ricky smiley's son he have everything two tab or well, two phones two tablet or tablet and a laptop he played uh roblox and all this stuff and and so i i i See it a little bit. He'll cut the keyboard on a little bit, but he, he loved the games more than the, in the music. So I, I said, even though I'm not going to try to force it on him, but I'm, I'm going to spend a, just a little bit of time just to see. Cause he, look, he used to bang on the drum that I had to hide the drumstick. Now I'm like, uh, uh, that's just too much. That's too much. <laughs> So, you shouldn't have done that. You yeah, should have yeah. just let them bang. Yeah, and scared. so, yeah, but see, we have neighbors that, that you know, we have neighbors, and I had to say, no, nah, I'm going to have these drumsticks because you, you in the living oh, okay. too loud. Look, I tried to put tape on the drums, everything to kind of lower the sound, and it's still loud. So, <laughs> so but anyway, yeah, but that's what God gave me uh, two, two, three weeks ago to transition the bass over to him. And as I do that, you know, everything else will start falling in line. So that's what I'm kind of on. And I want your prayers with, you know, but yeah, but I, oh, yeah. I, I really appreciate, I needed this. I really appreciate you looking, you know, onto that group and see, you know, seeing the, the, uh, bio and, and, 
I, I mean, I've been excited about this. I've been waiting on, you know that? I've been waiting on you. Even though I didn't get to look at some of your other shows and Billy's, I, look, I was going to do it yesterday. I told you I was going to try to do it yesterday. And girl, I got the ripping and running and funeral. And then the, uh, then the other thing I was supposed to do, uh, it got turned around. So I'm like, okay, it was something back to back, but I didn't do that one. I had to do this one, but I didn't do that one. I'm like, okay. <laughs> So, and then I looked at the time, time ran out. <laughs> so I said. But, you know, uh, I will say this, that uh, I don't know if you know this uh, basis. His name is Chris Anderson Chris. out of Chicago. You ever heard that, of him? That name sounds familiar because I know. Uh, I'll, I'm trying, I'm, I'll send you a link. Uh, yeah, send me that link. I, I probably don't know him by name, but I. I've seen a lot of Chicago bass players and I, I just love all of them. I'm trying to now, I'm trying to think of his name. Uh, he played on a video and, oh, I can't think of his name now, but yeah, he's another bass player. He's one of those classic bass, you know, the veterans. And that's why uh -huh. you ought to know who I'm talking about. I, I just can't think of it at the moment, but, but I'll, I'll. If it come to me, I'll say his name. But yeah, I, I well, think I know him too as well. But well, I brought him up because he said that when he started playing the bass, he started playing by uh, listening to TV. Oh, wow. and he would play. He was playing the bass, so he started playing theme songs. Uh -huh. So maybe that's what your son might start doing. You yeah. never know. Yeah, that's it. I know Chris said that's how he started. Yeah, is you know. He didn't know how to play and he had gone out, but you know, that's, that's, that's his interview. I did him a while back. Mm -hmm. So I, when you say about watching television and paying attention, sometimes kids do learn. They rather learn from a, not from a person, but trying to figure it out themselves. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you, you may be coming home one day and he's sitting there playing. What's his favorite show? The Roblox? You well, the, uh, well, it's a game called Roblox or something like that. Roblox. It's a game okay, okay. of video game app he, uh, have on his, uh, phone. But yeah, yeah. you're right. He, he's a, he stay on YouTube. He's singing every song. Look, it's like he been here before because he's singing oldies that I know he should know. But he know them, and they come on, and, and I'm singing them, and he's singing them with me. I'm like, what you learn? He's like, oh, I listen to my on my phone. I'm like, oh, you be listening. And so it's in him. It's in him. I know it's in him because I could, he know when you hit a wrong note. He know if a bass player or a drummer is not playing correctly. He can mm -hmm. tell you if somebody's off when they sing. He know all that. <laughs> so it's in him. I know it's in him. And I'm I'm just waiting to be excited to see him like Rufus, you know, like Rufus is. I'm waiting to see what he'll, because he'll probably play every instrument. And I'm thinking, because he'll drum, you know, he'll grab, go over to the drum and match the foot pedal. Then he'll come in and want the keyboard set up. Then, you know, the only one he had, hadn't been doing in a while, and it's just because I've been running, uh, is the bass. And so... Oh, okay. I'm, I'm just aimed eventually to get his own bass to call his own, you know, uh -huh. maybe a little small one where he can hold it and anytime he want to pick it up. Cause he have look, the bass stands and everything. It's just, I bought him a little guitar till he broke it, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm like, that's why I was like, now nah, wait a minute, you breaking guitars and I'm like, Oh, you know, you tuning up the string till they pop. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh. he learned it. Yeah. Now, yeah. I'll tell you funny another funny story about me and my grandmother and music. Mm -hmm. So, um, I know that my mother sang, my mother mm -hmm. sang, and uh, she stopped singing. I don't know why she did, but anyway. Yeah. So, but my grandmother, and I had bought this. I told you I was still trying to find my instrument. Okay. So, I found this, and at this time, it was a, uh, it wasn't Guitar Center, it was a music store downtown Chicago, mm -hmm. and I bought a guitar for like $39. Wow. And it was a folk guitar. Mm -hmm. So I'm sitting there, I say, okay, they're not going to let me get a piano, that's okay. I'm, I'm going to play the guitar, yeah. So I went and got a guitar because it looked easy. Yeah. So I'm sitting there pressing it. I said, uh-uh, I can't do a guitar. <laughs> My grandmother can play the guitar. <laughs> Look, so she can play. 
Yes. Wow. So, uh, I had bought it, and I didn't tell anybody that I bought it. I, go, I had gone downtown uh-huh. and bought the guitar, and I was sitting in my room trying to learn how to play it. I said, well, they won't let me do this because I know, you know, at least you can walk around with a guitar. Uh-huh. And my grandmother happened to come over to our house, and she said, what's that sitting over there in the corner? I said, I bought a guitar, and mm. I started laughing, and she said, let me see it. Oh, and here she, she go. And thing up and started playing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it, 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 it's, it's surprising to see that. And I told you about the woman that was 66 years old and she actually had a guitar and, and we, we begin to, and I think her first song that she played was Every Praise, Every Praise Hezekiah Walker. She, uh-huh. she picked it up and, and true enough, she started playing and I was like, okay. And she could learn her notes and she did a lot of, I guess like vendor work. So it kind of clashed with a lot of our time. So she hadn't, you know, called me probably been about, I guess about two years now because of the pandemic, you know, and you know, I see on Facebook some and I, I, and see my time just been limited. That's why I I ain't really asked nobody to start back up because I I, got to slow down first. So, so, and like I told you, I'm booked all the way to August right now. I got to, I got a convocation Pentecost next week. I had one last week and I thought both of them were going to clash going into this week. And I had this whole week off to get ready for you. So okay. I thought something was going to clash with this because the, the service I was supposed to uh, finish with after the funeral yesterday, it got kind of pushed back. So. So I was like, great. I got the time to rest up and get ready for you. <laughs> Cause I was going to be, look, you're going to have me in and out. You might have heard me snore a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm going to ask you now. So we've come to this point where I'm going to ask you to tell the audience how they can get in contact with you. Okay. And what you have coming up. Okay. Well, um, like I said, I have that Pentecost convocation. Uh, it's in an area called Silicaga. Alabama, and that's gonna start. And to get this, it, it was look. I thought the surgery was gonna clash with that because it starts Tuesday, and the actual surgery day was Wednesday of next week. So it, I was gonna try to do what I did, you know, when, from the last surgery. Well, it started like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So. Uh, you know, my doctor pushed it back. So that's one of the events. And then from there, I got to go. Oh, man, it, it, it's the whole week is full from starting Tuesday down to Sunday. I have a double booking on Sunday. So sometime on Sunday, I'll have three back to back. Sometimes three back to back. You got to give, so. give dates. You got to give yeah. dates. Oh, OK. OK. All right. So this uh, convocation start. um I think it's the 21st to the 24th and that's Silicaga, okay. Alabama. Yeah. And then, um, let's see. Saturday is the 25th. Uh, I think I, I, I don't have my calendar in, um, you know, my schedule okay. in front of me. I have something that day as well, Saturday. And I think that one was supposed to be. In either Montgomery, Alabama or Atlanta or in Georgia. Cause I'm, look, okay. I'm, I'm in the middle of Montgomery and Atlanta, Georgia, cause I'm in an area called Anderson, Oxford, Alabama. It's kind of half zone of Atlanta, half zone of Birmingham. So oh, okay. I'm pivot, look, I'm pivot to go either east or west or south <laughs> or north. <laughs> Yeah. Well, listen, do you have a web page? Well, I have a YouTube and it's Okay. It's uh KAJ Base One, the number one. K and that's one word. K A J Base B A S S One. And Okay. And I have, you know, of course two Facebook pages. That's A A Carl Jones. That's one word. A A Carl Jones. And then I have a second one because that one has reached 5,000 friends on that one, on the first one. The second one is Carl 
Is he the base season or season base? Season base. Senior. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember. I just set it up fast because I, I have 5,000 on the other one. And this one was about to be about five. I think it's about oh, okay. 2,000, two or 3,000. So I'm trying to get with Facebook to see how to get that official page where, you know, it's no limit. I think it's no limit on the followers or whatever because I'm, I'm like 5,000 out already on one page. And, okay. and the other one is almost about to be probably two, three thousand. And then also my email is, is K-A-R-L dot and J-O-N-E without the S on it and number eight, J-O-N-E eight at gmail dot com. Okay. All right, yeah, so that's how yeah. people can get in contact with you. Yes, yes. Now, I want to thank my guest, Carl Jones, for participating in this segment on Let's Talk Gospel Music Gold. Yes. These shows are to explore, record, and raise excitement about gospel music and its gold. I hope you, the audience, enjoyed this episode as much as I have. Please send me an email sharing your thoughts about this show segment. Also, if you have any suggestions of future guests you would like to hear on the show, send me an email to let's talk to gmg at gmail.com. That's let's talk the number two gmg at gmail.com. You may also like and share the episode. And if you subscribe, you'll be alerted, alerted when the newest episode is published. I am your host and Sonia saying, let's sing, let's shout and tell of the great news through Gospel Music Gold. Until the next episode, take care and God bless. Yay! Yay! Oh, yeah. <laughs>